What's up everybody, welcome to the video. I'm in the Uber right now, headed to the gym. I'm doing a collaboration today with one of my friends that you guys, you guys are gonna love this video. We are training glutes. To be totally honest, I'm really sore, so I'm just gonna have to make this happen. Drinking a 3D Energy, these are so bomb. Red is one of my favorite colors. Don't knock it till you try it, and I'll see you in there. <laughs> <laughs> you will never be <laughs> That's literally the same thing I say, like when girls say they don't wanna get too big, I'm like, you could try and you still wouldn't because like, it's so hard. Yeah. Like you have to intentionally do that do that in order for it to happen and it still takes forever. Exactly, and it's a hard job. Yeah. yeah, like I've been I've been bodybuilding style training for over 12 years now. And before that, I was always an athlete. So people think like in a year or two, they're gonna look like people that have been training for like, you know, 12, 15, 20 years. No, no chance. <laughs> yeah. No chance. It's fun though, whenever you first start, you get to see those like beginner gains, you know? Uh huh, for sure. I mean, to me, I'm so, it's so difficult for me to gain. Oh, yeah. I'm like one of those guys. Yeah, do you eat a lot? Uh, I do, but lately, because I've always wanted to have abs. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? The way I was eating, I was getting a little bit bigger. But yeah. I was getting like all, I don't know, just, Less of an ab situation. Yeah, less of an ab situation. That is the, the <laughs> kindest way to say that. <laughs> That's great. So now I'm just like, all right, I'm just gonna eat clean and I'm doing it for health pretty much. I'm yeah, sure. That's the best way to do it. Cause then you'll be consistent with it, you know? Yeah, for sure. When you do it cause it makes you feel good from the inside out. That's where, you know, you'll be consistent and it becomes a lifestyle. That's the whole key. Hi! How are you? Oh Good. I don't know how I am. I can't just like. All right, the collab you guys have been waiting for. <laughs> Drum roll, Lorley. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. Um, will you tell us like some of your biggest accomplishments within competing for anyone that doesn't already know you? Um, I can eat twenty thousand calories <laughs> <laughs> in one setting. <laughs> this is why we're friends. <laughs> She has graced the Olympia stage multiple times at this point, um, twice the Arnold stage, like all the biggest stages. She's an incredible competitor. Um, check her out, I'll post her stuff. But thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Of course, I'm so glad we're finally training. So, what do we decide to train? We're gonna do, since we're both very sore, we're gonna do a shoulder and glute, which is typical bikini workout. <laughs> But we gotta do it, and I'm so happy that we're training together. Me too. I feel that both of us just train by ourselves. Normally. Yeah. And we're always like in the gym, like looking at us, like okay, bus babe, bus babe. Uh huh. I know what you're doing, like. But training together is gonna be good, and I'm excited for it. So. Yes. And we also have your favorite, Doug here. Say what's up. What's up, guys? <laughs> Hello again. And so he's gonna put us through glutes and shoulders. Like she said, we're really sore, so. Sit back, relax, and All enjoy. Right. Everyone, welcome to the Evolve with Emily show. Uh, today we have a special guest, Laura Lee. Laura, Laura, Laura Lee, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Em. Of course. Um, and how do you say your last name? <laughs> Chapados. Oh. Chapados. <laughs> it's so hard to say. So let's, let's kind of give them an insight. Can you give us an insight to who you are, where you're from, and kind of how you started your competing journey? So a little introduction. I'm Laurel Chapados. I'm a IV bikini pro. Um, I'm French Canadian. I'm 24. I've been competing as a professional for four years now. Um, what else do you want to know? I love food. That's an understatement. <laughs> I've been to the Olympia stage for two years. T uh, 2018, I finished second, which was Ooh. my first Olympia. That's incredible. And, yeah, it was. And then 2019, I finished fourth. Mm -hmm. With also a lot incredible. going on in between, but uh, still very proud of my accomplishment. And yeah, I want to be a bikini competitor for the next seven years. So yeah, that's about. What's your What's your goal with it? You know, like my my ultimate goal mm -hmm. is to have the Miss Bikini Olympia title. Yes, girl, say it out loud. And I th I think it's okay to say that out loud. Like for s for so long, I've been scared to say it out loud because you know I I would think I I'd be cocky. We can say that in here. Yeah, of course, you can say whatever you want you know, here. <laughs> um, cocky, but it it's really not. It's uh, 
it's something that drives me inside of course like the thing is people think i chase that every day which is not the case like i don't go to the gym thinking like okay like this is for the title it's always in the back of my head but i really do this for myself Mm. and i think that's the shift that i had um recently not a shift but more of a my focus instead of chasing something all the time that's just far ahead from me why am i not chasing something that can be just right here the satisfaction of having a good workout the satisfaction of hitting my macros the satisfaction of just giving my all every single day and the time will come that i would get the title so when you you hear me say i want to be miss bikini olympia title i don't put a date on it it's going to be 20 2020 2021 you know um it's something that I want to have in my life. I want to be able to say uh, that I have the title, but for so much more than just a title and a trophy in my living room. Mm-hmm. For so much more than that. And people that know me, I don't have my trophies hanging out everywhere in my room. Not because I take that for granted, but just because I don't sit on my success. I don't think I don't think anybody can can say or sit especially in our sport the growth is it's constant constant and you can never put a deadline or just being like okay well i think i'm I'm good right here i think people that do that more power to them but for me it's just a lifetime journey That's so beautiful. And I think what you're doing is you're placing emphasis on living every single day, like in the moment and making the most out of that day. And I think that's so beautiful and so important, especially because here we just went through quarantine. And imagine if you had all your hopes in a show that got canceled, you know, and I think a lot of competitors listening probably experience that. So what can you say to like maybe the novice bikini competitor or the amateur competitor who kind of did have their hopes and dreams crushed because they were really like putting that one show on a pedestal? Like what would your advice be to them? You know, it, it's kind of hard because I, I could see myself being a novice and going through what the girls had, had to go through. Some went through, through a 20 week prep and couldn't be able to compete is very unfortunate but that's when you have to take a deep breath and ask yourself the reason why you're doing that why are you competing um competing is just the tip of the iceberg of so many other things and you often hear me say in interviews like what do you have to say to people that want to start that are just starting and the first thing i say is do it for yourself and for a long time, I didn't have the vocabulary because my first language is French to explain myself what I meant by that. Mm-hmm. But doing it for yourself is because things can happen. Life is going to keep happening. Environment is going to keep changing around you. But if you're able to get within yourself a, and bet on yourself every single day, like picking you up when life is hard, um, cheering on yourself when you did a good thing, mm-hmm. more like that's where your true power is and there will be another show i know it i i wouldn't say that I would be completely hurt and crush but let that happen for a day and then stand up the next day and just try to make solution and just yeah. i love that i think that's so helpful too i have this one friend who her and her significant other they have this deal where um For example, like, let's say that her husband went through something really difficult and he was really upset every day. Finally, she asked him, hey, how long do you need to be upset about this? Because there needs to be an end to you sitting in your, you know, emotions. And so he was like, okay, like, I guess I can get on board with that. And he was like, I need the rest of this month. And she was okay. And so for the rest of the month, she allowed him to be upset, to have his thing. Um, And then when that day came, she was like, okay so now it's done and now we move forward you know so I think there's something in allowing yourself time to process whatever you're feeling but then just like you said pick yourself up and choose to move forward and choose to you know move forward in a new direction Um, because I always say like you're the only one that can pick yourself up there's no amount of motivation no amount of inspiration you can get from somebody else like at the end of the day it's you in your bedroom alone crying (laughs) and you're the one that has to choose to get up out of bed (laughs) totally totally and I feel that there's a lot of a lot of people that have been 
DMing me and asking me, uh, you know, like, how do you get, like, motivation? And it's not all roses, you know? Like, I I diet, but I still love cookies. I feel that people maybe forget that <laughs> we're human, just like, like, I can cry in the shower just yeah, as you, you know? Yeah. Um, Shower is a great place to cry. <laughs> I really like crying in the shower you because, like, no one knows. There's a little noise. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can literally. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I've had my best cries in the shower, and then it's done. You get out of the shower, and it's like nothing happened because you're already wet. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Best spot. Sorry, I but cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> you're so funny. But I, I like that. I like, um, and I made a post when this quarantine was up, and I. I was seeing people, you know, like trying to put um, workout videos and everything and trying to get like that healthy switch and trying to motivate other, which is great. I love the po positivity and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, like, I felt that a lot of people were pressured mm -hmm. to do something that they didn't really want to do. Mm -hmm. And again, you get so much pressure from society, like to do things a certain way. But at the end of the day, like, again, if you don't do it for yourself, you're probably you're setting yourself to failure. Like you really yeah. have yeah. to stay true to yourself. Yeah. I agree with that. I think in everything that you do, because we were talking in the gyms, we just trained, which if you guys are listening to this podcast, then we have a YouTube video that goes along with this. So make sure to check out the YouTube video. The link will be down below, but we were talking about um, how we want to have longevity in what we're doing. And I think the way that you create longevity, whether it be your personal brands, it be a business, it be a relationship, it be anything is by being the truest expression of yourself from the start. You know, imagine like you said, if you do competing for reasons other than for yourself, imagine if you get into a new relationship and you're not really being yourself, you have a little bit of a mask on, you know, you're showing them what you think they want to see out of you. That's not going to have longevity. So I think the way that we create longevity in life and competing and business and our personal brand is just truthfully staying true to ourselves, knowing that, yeah, we may not get the short quick term, you know, some, sometimes it seems like there might be a more short term win if we succumb to not being our truest selves, you know, like there's maybe totally. an opportunity or, you know, some other, um, ulterior motives for doing things. But when we check ourselves and we ask, is this really aligned with who I am, what my values are and where I want to go in life? And if it doesn't match up to that, the right answer is always to not do that. The right answer is to always choose yourself. Um, and so I think that's something that you said you were experiencing even, you know, within competing and, and stuff is always choosing the option that creates longevity for, you, for yourself. Um, so last year at last year's Olympia, you went through something really difficult. Um, right before Olympia, you had an injury. So I want to know mentally as an elite athlete, as one of the top Olympians, literally one spot away from missing, uh, from getting Miss Bikini Olympia last or the year before that. How did you mentally handle going through something so difficult right before essentially game day? I've, so I just love what everything that you said before, mm -hmm. you know, longevity and staying true to yourself. Um, that injury, you know, everything went so fast because it was literally 12 days before mm. um, the big stage. I just, I, it was two days before, um, so I came back from Canada seeing my family and stuff and came back to California training and just one day I wake up and for to do my check and I just can't stand up. Like my back was painful, like very bad. Wow. And so what happened when you're that lean and so close to a show, cortisol is a thing and then you get injured and what your body does is it retains water to contain the inflammation and I woke up literally looking like 12 weeks out mm. I was skinny watery flat and I'm looking at the mirror and I'm just again taking a deep breath and just picking myself up trying to do my check-in as much as I can and it's really about doing your best and I just that day I took a rest day as specified by my coach and I honestly for me from there it was just a blackout it was just a just do what you gotta do kind of thing mm -hmm. and I wish I could have come up with a more specific answer about what I felt but 
just I knew I had 24 hours every day. I knew I I had a game plan, which was to step on stage and I I couldn't. I knew that I had to step on stage and the goal was to be able to pose and actually walk on stage at the Olympia. So I was. All right, guys, I'm going to close the video out there. If you guys enjoyed this style of workout and training and the podcast over it, let me know. Um, go head over to iTunes, Spotify. You can find the full episode of the podcast on there. Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. I Right now, I'm headed to uh, St. Louis, Missouri, and we're going to be doing the huge First Form headquarters on, like reveal. So stay tuned for that video. It's going to be incredible, and I'll see you guys in the next one.